Oh, I'm here. What's up, everybody? <laughs> What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? Who's here? Brother Curtis is here. Uh, Joanna is here. James is here. Ashley is here. What's up, Ashley? James, Paul, I just said that. Um, David is here. Q the Hebrew is here. <laughs> Harold is here. Mavis is here. What's going on, guys? My name is Tilla. You guys can follow me on all social media over here. It's actually also down there in the description box. You guys can follow me on all social media. Follow us on all social media if you guys want to. If you guys are here and you want others to be here in a fellowship with us, we're going to be talking about Babylon today. Um, I don't know why we're going to be talking about Babylon. It just came to my mind. Um, but if you want others to come and follow us and, and fellowship with us, please share this live stream with those who you believe will be blessed by this live stream, by this um, discussion. And if you guys are new on here and you guys have not yet subscribed, please subscribe and also make sure to hit the bell so that you guys can get notified every time we go live on this channel. Um, and... Of course, guys, if you guys want to help us out and support us, you guys can do so by praying for this online video ministry and also donating at schoolforprofits.tv. We also have a Patreon page where you guys can be patrons, partners, or sponsors. Links are in the description box. And of course, you guys get like different perks. You guys can um, watch our videos. Uh, you guys can get early access to our videos. You guys can get early access and exclusive access to our movies and things like that. So... What is going on, everybody? What is going on? It's Coles is here. How you doing? Um, Cutting Edge TV, Craig, um, Paul, Daughter of the Father, Cyan Kim, C Prince. What up, everybody? We are going to be talking about um, Babylon today. Um, but before we do that, I got some announcements to make. We've got some, some announcements to make. Um, give me a second. Okay, announcements, announcements, announcements. From... Uh, from Big Bro Curtis, um, here's here's an announcement. First announcement is um, uh, he's doing a, a Big Brother. Curtis is doing a uh, an SFP contest. So those the whoever wins the contest is going to get a free T-shirt, a classic T-shirt from our online store, um, and we will draw the name on August twenty third. And announce it on the live stream as well. Um, so this is how you enter. You go to Attila uh, Kakarot, the Facebook page. The link is in the description box. Um, uh, what you what you do is there's a there's a uh, uh, there's a post on there. There's the the contest post. You like it, and then you share it. That's how you enter your name in the contest and then again the first prize uh, uh, prize is the SFP logo classic style um, shirt I wish I had I wish I had it on with uh, I wish I had it on but I think it's in the dirty laundry um, so I can't put that on because then I'll stink um, so any color any size um, uh, for of course so all you got to do go to the Facebook page links in the in description box like it uh, no, no, not the, not the Facebook page, but the like the post, the contest post, like it, share it. That's how you get your name entered into the contest. And then we will uh, draw the name on the 23rd of August. Um, draw the winner. Um, of course, you guys can follow us on all social media. Links are all in the, in the description box. Um, number three, third announcement. Uh, if you guys remember, we've donated to... A uh, young lady in in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, her name was Johan Joanna, Joanna Smart, and she wanted to uh, also get into YouTube ministry. And we sent her. You guys donated, and we appreciate the donations. We sent her uh, the the camera um, that you guys donated for. The camera got there, but we had a little little bit of an obstacle because she couldn't. Uh, she couldn't take it out unless she paid the, I guess, the shipping fee or whatever fee from from the U.S. to uh, Trinidad and Tobago. So, is it, am I saying that right, Tobago? Yeah. Um, so, we had to pay the shipping, shipping fee. So, we had to ask um, for some more donations. Luckily, well, not luckily. I don't believe in luck. Um, praise the Lord that someone donated, well, a few of you guys donated... Um, and we were able to uh, get her her camera. So she she has her camera. 
We are waiting for her to, you know, to get some some videos rolling. Um, she actually ha sent me uh, pictures of of the camera and um, sent me some videos of her testimony, um, which I will uh, I will put it all together for the next live stream, um, so so that we can get updated on her ministry. So watch out for that. Be on the lookout for that. Okay, and then also. Uh, Teespring store if you guys want to support this ministry you guys can do so uh, the um, One way that you guys can do that is with our Teespring store you guys can buy some shirts go to schoolforprofits.tv schoolforprofits.tv um, Give me one second Schoolforprofits.tv you guys can scroll down uh Oh Oh, yeah, and we also have a sale that never ends for some reason. I'm gonna have to end it sometime before I go to Nebraska. Okay, so you go down, you scroll down all the way to clothing, okay? Click on shop. Click that off. And um, you guys can, you guys have plenty of shirts to, to choose from here. Um, here's a popular one. A popular shirt from from us this is the Daniel 2 prophecy t-shirt um, you guys can you know you guys have all kinds of different shirt design or I mean uh, different uh, options here women's women's sweatshirt toddlers uh, kids crew neck um, sweatshirt um, premium pullover hoodie all these different uh, different um, options and then also different colors so if you guys want to support us by doing that you guys can do so go to schoolforprofits.tv go to clothing you guys can choose whatever you guys want whatever design you guys want and um, it will certainly definitely help us out um, we can uh, be able to um, hire some people and uh, uh, other things with with uh, with that support and then also um, You guys can also support us by going to the patreon page links are in the description box You guys can support us by doing that by by um, becoming a patron a partner or a sponsor and um, You know you guys can help us out uh, pay for animations for the next films and, and equipment and things like that and by the way um, shout out to I don't know if I could say the person's name, but um Someone made a big donation because they wanted they wanted us to get that camera that uh, that we wanted to get. Um, it's not an expensive camera, not a, not not it's not like fifteen thousand dollars or anything like that. But um, so we are able to set aside that money for a new camera so that we can um, so that we can start on the next couple of films. And um, so thank you to that person. I don't know if I could say the person's name. And we'll be able to start on those uh, those other films, the other documentaries that I wanted to start on. And maybe even possibly put it on Netflix um, as well as um, Amazon Prime. So is that all? Oh, End Time Quarantine. The next, um, the next movie is called End Time Quarantine. We don't know when it's going to be, uh, when it's going to come out. But... It's already, uh, let's say, probably 85% done. And, um, uh, you know, it, we're very excited about it. Um, I'm going to be going to Nebraska at the end of August. And we're coming back September, probably September 10th, around that, around around September 10th. So maybe September 15th or a little, a little, a little over a month then the uh, movie will be available. Um, so we can't wait to release that. Uh, anyways, let's pray before we begin. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this uh, fellowship. We thank you, Father, for um, another day that we can study the Bible. Uh, today, Father, we're going to be studying um, Babylon, end time, uh, end time prophecy. And so please be with us. Um, lead us today, Father. And let us know what it is that you want us to know. Uh, lead us to your character, um, most importantly. So please be with us now. Um, we ask you all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Babylon. Babylon, am I, uh, am I too loud now? Sorry. 
<laughs> Sorry, I think I'm too loud. Okay, Babylon. So, in the end, we have, remember, in Revelation, uh, Revelation 13, we have the beast, the first beast, and we have the second beast. In Revelation 17, we have a, a harlot that sits on top of the beast, the first beast. Now, if for those of you guys who don't know yet who the beast is, there is a, a we have a, 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 a movie out. It's called From America to Babylon. Link is in the description box if you guys want to watch it on Amazon Prime. We also have the other movie, the first movie, From Babylon to America. Also, link is in the descri description box. Um, but... Um, in those two move in those two movies, we uh, we we detail we detail some of the things that we find on Revelation thirteen, uh, specifically the um, the beast, the first beast of Revelation thirteen, and the second beast of Revelation thirteen, uh, and also we we also detail uh, the mark of the beast. Okay, but now we have in Revelation seventeen. Um, we have the the beast makes its way, makes its way the the first beast makes its way in Revelation 17 again, but this time in Revelation 17, there is a woman, a harlot that sits on top of the beast. Okay, so who is the first beast of Revelation uh, 13? We know that the first beast of Revelation 13. If we uh, if we go to Revelation 13, so. It, this is talking about the first beast. It says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So we know that according to Daniel 7, verses 17 and 23, a beast in Bible prophecy is symbolic for a kingdom, or a nation, or a superpower, political power. Um, and this beast... Um, this beast rises out of the sea, and the sea, according to Revelation 17, is symbolic for many nations and, and, and uh, multitudes and tongues and people. And so this is a, a beast, a superpower that rises out of a densely populated um, area. And it says that this beast will have the name of blasphemy on its foreheads, on its heads. Okay, so what is blasphemy? In the Bible, well, we know in John, I believe in John 10 and Mark, uh, John, John 10, um, Matthew, no, John 10, Mark 20, Mark 14, and other places in the Bible, we know that blasphemy. If you if you do a proof text on what, on what blasphemy is, let's not let's not use our own opinion on what blasphemy is, but if we do a proof text on it, we will see that blasphemy is when a man claims to be God on earth. When a man claims to be uh, to be able to forgive sin, and when a man claims to be the Christ, okay, that is what blasphemy is. Again, if you guys don't know that, um, link in the description box from America to Babylon. Go and watch it. But that's pretty much uh, a summary, um, a summary of what blasphemy is. Okay, so we have a beast, a superpower that rises out of a the sea, a densely populated area. Having the names of blasphemy, meaning this person is going to claim to be, or this person or entity is going to claim to be God, he's going to claim to be the Christ, and he's going to claim to have the power to forgive sin. Now, with this, with this one verse alone, we can identify who the beast is, and that beast, is, who's the what is the only entity in the world that is a superpower that comes out of the a densely populated area that claims to be God on earth, the God of the Bible, claims to be the Holy Father. Okay, claims to to be the Christ, the replacement of Christ, or the representative of Christ, or the the Viker of Christ, and claims to have the power to forgive sin. There is no other entity in the world that you know that that this this identifies with except for the the Roman Catholic Church or the papacy. Now this is a beast. Um, in Daniel seven, in Daniel seven we find. Um, those those four beasts in Daniel seven, we find that those four beasts are actually uh, a, a mixture of both uh, both uh, political power and religious power. Um, Babylon was a mixture, right? 
It was a beast. It was a mixture of political power and their pagan Babylonian um, uh, uh, beliefs. Also, Medo-Persia, the one that conquered Babylon. They have their political power, the political side, and then they, are, they also have the religious pagan side. Um, Greece, of course, they have their political side and they have their religious side. And then the fourth beast, which is the beast that nobody can explain. It was like a dragon. And that dragon was Rome, which was a political... Uh, polit they have the political side and they have their uh, religious pagan side. Sun worship and all that. And all that comes with um, sun worship. All that, can that comes with paganism. They have that side. So a beast is not just a, po a political power. A beast is also... Uh, a beast is, in, in Bible prophecy is also uh, political and is both political and um, religious, um, paganism, both political and religious, okay? So we have a beast, both political and religious, that is blasphemous. That's none other than the papacy, okay? That's none other than the papacy, okay? So in Revelation 17... In Revelation 17, <laughs> you guys already know. Okay, what is a woman a symbol of in the Bible? Let's go to, let's go to Jeremiah 6 and verse 2. Jeremiah 6 and verse 2. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. What is the daughter of Zion? It's talking about Israel here, God's congregation, God's church. I say this all the time. The church is not a church building. It's not the building. The church is really a congregation of people. So God's congregation or God's church is likened to a comely and delicate woman. So in the Bible, in Bible prophecy, a woman is symbolic for what? The church, God's congregation. You can also find this in Ephesians Ephesians 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, God's congregation. It's, it's likened to a wife, right? That's a woman. Christ is the husband. And then the church is the bride, uh, the bride of Christ. You can even find that in Revelation. It says that the bride of Christ... Um, is is seen coming down from heaven. That's the New Jerusalem. Uh, so we have, so we have, um, in in the Bible we have a woman symbolic for a church or a congregation. A pure woman symbolic for a pure church. A, a, a harlot. What is a harlot symbolic for? If a, if a pure woman is symbolic for a pure church, then the harlot is symbolic for a. Okay, so if we go to if we go to Ezekiel, let's go to Ezekiel real quick. Ezekiel, this should be elementary for some of you guys. Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel eight. Um, no, 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 no. Okay, Ezekiel sixteen. Okay, okay, we're gonna Ezekiel sixteen. Okay, Ezekiel sixteen is very significant. Um, it's you know between the 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 relationship between God and His people is very significant. Now let's let's read. I don't know if we want to read the whole thing. Let's read some. Let's read some. It says, "Son of man, cause Jerusalem, Jerusalem is God's congregation, to know her abominations, to know her abominations, and say thus and say thus saith the Lord, God unto Jerusalem, thy birth." And thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, that's Abraham, and thy mother was a Hittite, that's Sarah. And as for thy nativity, in the day thou wast born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. So this is talking about um, Israel. They were not cut. Uh, the, the the navel will not was not cut. The, uh, neither was there, uh, neither were they washed in water. What does that mean? That's the baptism. Remember, after this, after after God um, says this, He then begins to say uh, other things, and and one of those things was that well, we find out that that Israel was washed in water. Remember, the Red Sea experience was a baptism experience, says, um, I think it was Paul that said that. So, 
They were washed in water. water. That's baptism. None I none I pitied thee to do any of these any of these unto thee to have compassion upon thee, but thou wast cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou wast born. And when I passed by thee I saw I, and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, When thou wast in thy blood, live, uh, live. Yea, I said unto thee, When thou wast in thy blood, live. I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field. What is that? See, this is very significant language that God is um, using here. Cause thee to multiply. Remember, um, he told Adam and Eve to multiply. I have caused thee to multiply. Well, because Israel was God's wife. And we'll see that in a little bit. Um, I've caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field, and thou hast increased and waxed and great, and thou art come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thine hair is grown, whereas thou wast naked and bare. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee. And covered thy nakedness, yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee. Now remember that um, that experience that they had with uh, uh, with God and uh, by the Mount Sinai. That was a marriage covenant that they experienced. He said, "He said, look, he said, he said, uh, uh, God said, look, you do all these things, and I'll bless you." And then, and then the people said, "Everything that the Lord will say, uh, everything that Lord have commanded, we will do." That means uh, that means it's a it's a um, it's a, a marriage covenant. The stream stopped. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um All right, it's back on. Okay, sorry guys if you guys experienced that. Um, uh, Big Bro Curtis said that the stream stopped, but it's back on now. Um, I don't know where I left off. Uh, I don't know where I left off. Uh, l let me know, guys, if you guys know where I left off, huh? The oh, the covenant. Okay. Yeah, but they they might not they might not have gotten that. So let me know where I left off, guys, and then we can. Uh, we can continue. Sorry, guys, if you experienced that. Um, I don't know what's going on with uh, with YouTube. YouTube lately has been it's been weird. A while ago, I was trying to go live, but for some reason, it wouldn't let me. It, it keeps going. It keeps going on the mobile uh, mobile instead of uh, on the desktop. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. So, all right. So we can keep going. Okay. So, so again, in in in, I think we were in Ezekiel sixteen, right? Give me one second. That threw me off a little bit. Okay, Ezekiel sixteen, right? Ezekiel sixteen. Yeah, Ezekiel sixteen, and verse two. Okay, Ezekiel says, okay, son of man caused Jerusalem to know her, her abominations. Okay, again, talking about uh, Jerusalem, God's congregation, calls her a her, her abominations, and say, Thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, that's Abraham, and thy mother was an Hittite, that's Sarah. And as for thy nativity in the day thou was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water. It means they weren't baptized to supple thee. Thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. At all, none I pitied thee 
to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion unto, upon thee, but thou wast cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou wast born. When I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live. Okay? I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field. Again, that same language that he used um, uh, for the marriage of Adam and Eve, to multiply, to multiply, as the bud of the field, and thou was, has increased and waxen great, and thou, has, uh, and thou art come to excellent ornaments, thy breasts are fashioned, and thine hair is grown, whereas thou was naked and bare. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee, and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord uh, God, and became, and thou became as mine. So this is the marriage covenant that God is talking about here. In the uh, Mount Sinai, the Mount Sinai experience between God and Israel, that was actually a marriage covenant. If you guys remember, um, God was saying, everything, you do all these commandments that I tell you, uh, and I will bless you. And then the people said, everything that you have said, we will do. So that is a, it's a marriage covenant. So you can tell now that God is the husband and Israel was the wife. God was the husband and Israel was the wife. But something went terribly bad. Um, we can, we can, uh. We can see that. Well, let's keep reading. Then washed I thee with water. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. I anointed thee with oil. That's the Holy Spirit. I clothed thee also with broidered work, and shod thee with badger skin. I clothed thee with broidered work. I clothed thee. I clothed, I clothed thee, and shod thee with badger skin. Again, the same thing that happened with uh, Adam and Eve. Remember, Adam and Eve was clothed. Remember, um, Adam and Eve was um, they clothed themselves with uh, fig leaves. But God said, "Take those fig leaves off, and I will clothe you with what? With with um, uh, uh, tunics of skin." Okay, that means they got the robe of righteousness. This is the robe of righteousness. And I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands and a chain in on thy neck. Now this is not. This is more so talking about um, God's, um, what do you call it? God's sanctuary. Remember, the sanctuary was full of uh, gold and all kinds of ornaments and jewels and things like that. That's God's sanctuary. And God's, the, the, the jewels and the gold and all that, most, mostly the gold and the jewels and all that uh, stuff was inside the sanctuary. Okay? Inside the sanctuary symbolizing that that the jewels and the gold and the and the silver should be inside not outside it's not an outside appearance it should be an inside thing so our treasure should be inside not outside okay um and i put a, a jewel on thy forehead and earrings in thine ear and a beautiful crown upon thy thine head and thus was thou decked with gold and silver and and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and embroidered work Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil. Fine flour and honey and oil. That's um, that's bread, the bread of life. And thou uh, what thou was exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom, and thy renown. Now this is something went wrong um, now. Okay, and thou re thy thy renown went forth among the heathen, for thy beauty went forth among the what the heathen the pagans. For thy beauty, for it was perfect through my comeliness, which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty. Look at this. They trusted in thine own, be uh, thine own beauty and played the harlot because of thy renown and pours out thy fornications on everyone that passed by his it was. Fornications. Harlot. What? What made them a harlot? They started, they started um, heathenizing. Okay, they started heathenizing. That's what made them a harlot. That's, and there's more. There, there's more. It says, "And pours thy fornications on every one that passed by. His it was, and that and of thy garments thou didst take, and deckest thy high places with diverse colors, and placed the harlot thereupon." 
the like thing shall not come, neither shall it be so. Thou hast also taken thy fair jewels of my gold and my silver, which I have given thee, and madest to thyselves images of men. Images of men. Now, remember this. We're going to talk about this later on. And didst commit whoredom with them. Images of men and committed whoredom with them. This is strong language from God. They committed whoredom with them. Strong language. Images of men. Images of men. That's idolatry. So they became a, a harlot, a whore, because they started participating in idolatry. And tookest thy broidered garment and coverest them, and thou hast set mine oil and mine incense before them. Now that word, incense, if you do a proof text on that word incense, incense was used for prayer in the Old Testament. They would, they would light incense um, and they would pray because the incense going up into the sky symbolically is your prayers going up to God. So they were, they were um, setting incense before these, um, these uh, uh, idols. They were praying to these idols. They were praying to these idols. Can you guys think of any church today? Okay. My meat also, which I, I gave thee, fine flour and oil and honey, wherewith I fed thee. So what what was what was what was his meat? The meat that he gave them? The meat that he gave them was not flesh. The meat that, that he gave them was bread. I gave thee fine flour and oil and honey, wherewith I fed thee, thou hast even set it before them for a sweet savour. And thus it was, saith the Lord, the Lord God. So they set they set um God's bread before before the uh, the idols. What does that mean? Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters whom thou hast borne unto me, and these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this of thy whoredoms a small matter, that thou hast slain my children and delivered them, unto, uh, delivered them to cause them to pass through the fire for them? That's also significant, to pass through the fire. What they were doing is... Um, they were sacrificing their their um, firstborns to someone to a, a pagan god named Baal. They would they would burn them. They would put, they would put them through fire. See, this is this is a this is a counterfeit of the fire that we are supposed to go through, which is the 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 baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is the fire that we are supposed to go through. And then and then he says, "What and in all thine abominations and thy whoredoms thou hast remembered thy." Thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth, when thou wast naked and bare, and was polluted in thy blood, and it came to pass after all thy, thy wickedness. Woe, woe unto thee, saith the Lord God, that thou hast also built unto thee an, ele uh, an eminent place, and hast made thee an high place in every street. Thou hast built thy high place at every head of the way, and hast made thy beauty to be abhorred, and hast opened thy feet to everyone that passed by, and multiplied thy whoredoms. Wow. Open thy feet. Open thy feet. This is similar to what we say nowadays when, when you, um, uh, when you, um, you know, some people call a female who, you know, do those things they open their legs this is god saying you are you have opened your feet this is strong strong language from god and thou hast commit uh, committed fornication with the egyptians thy neighbors great um, of flesh and has increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger behold therefore i have stretched out mine hand over thee and have diminished thine ordinary food and deliver thee unto the will of them that hate thee, the daughters of the Philistines, which are ashamed of thy lewd way. So, so we have a harlot in who in who in God's people. God's people. Now, God doesn't call um, the heathens harlots. God doesn't call the heathens harlots. He calls his own people harlots. He calls his own people uh, harlots. His own people. Those who profess to be God's people cause them harlots. And the reason why, we, you saw the reason why. The reason why was because they were committing abominations. They were, um, they were uh, um, um, worshipping other gods and uh, 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 praying to, to idols and things like that. I mean, we see today, 
that there are there is a church today that sits on top of the the, the first beast of Revelation 13. If you go to Revelation 17, if you go to Revelation 17, let's go there real quick. If you go to Revelation 17, what is this? Revelation 17. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven uh, vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth up, uh, upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed what? Fornication. Very similar language. Fornication. The inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit unto the into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Wait a minute. If you go to Revelation 13, that same beast is right here. Full of the name of blasphemy, seven seven heads, ten horns. Yep, same beast. Same beast. That's the papacy. That's the papacy. So he's so this this uh, this this woman is sitting on the papacy. Woman sitting on the papacy. Now remember, the papacy is a, a union of church and state. Who is the woman then? The woman then is the woman then is the this. Um. <laughs> okay, give me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. There you go. Sorry, guys. Okay, so <laughs> what's up? What's up? <laughs> uh, maybe he might he might uh, he might do a guest appearance later. So, anyways, the woman then. So we have the papacy, right? Beast, right? Papacy, beast. Uh, the papacy is a union of church and state. So the beast is a union of church and state. So then, this the harlot then that sits on top of the papacy is what? Remember, the, the harlot is a and is a is a is a church, a woman is symbolic for a church, God's congregation. So then the harlot is symbolic for a professed God's congregation, but have gone into apostasy. What is the only church? Well, you guys already know this, man. You guys should already know this. What is the only church that sits on top of the papacy? The only church that sits on top of the papacy is none other than the uh, the Roman Catholic Church. That's the church side of the papacy. That's the church side of the papacy. Do they are do they are they doing the same things? Are, do are they wearing? Um, do they deck themselves with gold and silver? Look what it says. This woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and silver and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations. Again, similar language here. Full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. Now I want you guys to notice. Purple and scarlet. Of course you can say purple and scarlet. That's the, the bishops and the, 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 what do you call those? The bishops of Rome and the, uh, what, was, what was the name of? The bishops and the, I forgot the other, the other name of the, the title of those people. There's the bishops and there's the, um, the, the people who uh, who wear the scarlet. Um, if you guys know, please let me know. But um, okay, so anyways, what is missing here in in the Bible? If you go, if you take a look at what's, um, if you take a look at the the sanctuary of God, we find the color. Uh, we find gold and silver and all these things. We also find the color purple and scarlet. And then there's another color. There's another color, blue. We find the color blue. So this is a. So remember. So remember, the sanctuary is supposed to be the temple of God. And now we have um, churches that are also called sanctuaries. Okay? So churches, we have, um, well, where was I going with this? We have churches, okay? Oh, yeah, cardinals. So, thank you. Thank you, Brother Brad. They're called cardinals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cardinals. So so, so we have the bishops and the cardinals, okay? The cardinals wore the scarlet and the bishops wore the, the purple. So in the sanctuary of God, we have um, uh, purple and scarlet and we have the blue. We have blue. And what does the blue represent? What does the color blue represent? Now, purple represents... Um, represents uh, I think purple represented the uh, royalty and scarlet represented represented um, I forgot what it represented but but the blue specifically represented now last week we were talking about this the blue color represented 
the commandments of God. I forgot where it was. I think it's in Exodus 30 and verse... Where was it? Was it verse thir uh, Exodus 30? Let me, um, let me look it up. It's in here somewhere. Exodus 30. No, was it Exodus 30? It was not Exodus 30, wasn't it? Oh, Numbers 15. Sorry. Numbers 15. Okay, if we go to Numbers uh, 15, verses 38 and 39. Watch this. Numbers 15, verses 38 and 39. You guys should already know this. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, that, that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue, and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and to do them. So that ribbon of blue, that ribbon of blue, was for them to look upon so that they can remember all the commandments, okay? And that blue was also uh, in the sanctuary. In the sanctuary, you, you find the colors purple, scarlet, and blue. And this is why we have a, a prayer room here. We have a prayer room. We have a prayer room that's got uh, a, a purple, scarlet, and blue. And that blue is for us to remember the commandments of God. Now, if you go to Revelation 17, they have a sanctuary here. Revelation 17, a sanctuary, a church. Revelation 17. And that church, that church has the, has the purple, has the scarlet. What's missing? Where's the blue? The blue is missing. Everything else is there. Gold is there. Precious stones and pearls, that's there. But where's the blue? The blue is missing. Why? Why? Are they keeping the commandments of God? Which commandments are they keeping? Which blue laws are they keeping? <laughs> Which blue laws are they keeping? Which blue laws are they keeping? They're not... They have forgotten the commandments of God. They have forgotten. They forgot to put the... They have forgotten the commandments of God. What, what commandment did God say to remember? They have forgotten the commandments of God. They have forgotten the commandments of God. So, so again, we have um, this woman arrayed in purple and scarlet, um, decked with gold and, and, and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. And abominations of the earth. What does that mean? Mother of harlots. Mother of harlots. Now we know that har a harlot in the Bible is an apostate church now. Now we know that, uh, that, that, that um, in the Bible, a harlot is an apostate church. So if this is the mother, <laughs> what does the Catholic Church call themselves? The mother. The mother of what? The mother of who? The mother of what? Different what? Churches that branched off from the Catholic Church. Remember, there was a reformation that went on. Martin Luther, John Huss, um, um, Wycle uh, Wycliffe, all these people that reformed, the, that tried to reform the church, they branched off of the church. They, 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 they were called Protestants. Okay? And so they believe. So a lot of Catholics, a lot of deep Deep religious Catholics believe that the, their church is the mother church and that, 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 that we need to go back to the mother. That Protestants need to go back to... Now guess what? There was a treaty, a declaration that was signed not too long ago saying all Protestants now are back with who? With, 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 with the mother church. The only per the only the only church that did not sign that treaty the the only church that did not sign um I mean the only church that I can think of that did not sign for sure is the Seventh Day Adventist Church. So you can say that the Seventh Day Adventist Church is the only true Protestant church left. The only true, the only true. Of course, there are more out there that that um that 
uh, are also keeping God's commandments, truly keeping God's commandments and things like that. I've, I've, I know of other churches that they, they are on the right path, but they still believe in a couple things that are, that are from the Catholic church. Um, but there are other churches out there that are, they're actually keeping the commandments of God, uh, Sabbath, Sabbath commandment also, but they also bring in other things that that's not biblical, but this is interesting. So, the Catholic Church is the mother church, the church of all what harlots. Are there are there other churches today that are also in apostasy? There are other churches today that are also in apostasy. And those are the daughter churches. Who are the daughter churches? Remember what the the the, the, the encyclicals, the the Catholic encyclicals, and and um, what do you call those catechisms say? That if Protestants want to become, if Protestants want to be true Protestants, they should keep the commandments of God as it is written by God Himself with His finger, Exodus twenty. But but they said now, um, if you go to, um, if you watch the movie from America to Babylon, I list the whole, I list all of the uh, everywhere where they where they uh, claim this. They say that if you keep Sunday, you are honoring the spokesperson of the church the pope so you are no longer honoring god you are you're honoring the spokesperson uh, of the church the pope if you keep sunday are there people are, are there churches today that are uh, harlot they have harlot characteristics keeping sunday instead of sabbath then those churches are called Harlots, and they are the daughters of who? The mother church, which is the papacy, the Roman Catholic Church. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So, there is a, uh, there is, there is a story in the Bible. If you, guys, if you guys have read this, the story is the story of Herod, Herodias, and Salome. Herod... Herodias and Salome. Okay, watch this. Um, let me go. How do you spell Salome? I don't know how to spell Salome. Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys what happened. Okay, so so this was this was um, hold on a second. Herod Herodias. And Salome, wasn't it? Is it Salome? Yeah, it was Salome. Okay. So, let me look for it for you guys. Actually, let me Google that because I, I forgot how to spell that name. Herod and Salome. Yeah, Salome. Um... <laughs> You guys can see, okay, man. This is this is once you when you guys when you guys know this this story, it'll it'll blow your mind, especially with what you guys already know right now in this study. Okay, Matthew fifteen, Matthew fifteen. This is the introduction of uh, Salome here. Matthew fifteen. And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that. Saw that he. Uh, no, no, no. This was not it. Sorry. Was it Matthew? Man, what, am I forgetting this? Am I forgetting? Am I forgetting these verses now? I think I'm getting old. But so, so anyways, um, what happened was okay. So I'm just gonna tell you what happened. Herod. Uh, Herod was in love with Salome, Her Herodias' daughter. Herodias was a harlot. Herod was a king. Herodias was a harlot. Salome was the harlot's daughter. Okay, and then and then um, Salome. She, Herod was so in love with Salome, and he said, "Whatever you say, I will do." Herod said that to Salome, and Salome said, "Cut off." Salome said, cut off the, the head of John the Baptist. 
and he cut off the head of John, John the ba- his friend, John the Baptist. Herod, Herod and John the Baptist were friends. So we have a typology here. John the Baptist is a type of who? God's people. We have the king, King Herod, the kings of the earth. We have our harlot, harlot queen, which is um, Herodias. And then we have Salome, the daughter, the daughter of Herodias, the harlot. In Revelation 17, what do we have in Revelation 17? In Revelation 17, we have a harlot. Okay, we have a harlot. We have a, a, a scarlet-colored beast, which is the political side, the king's, the kingship side of um, this beast, of the, uh, of, of the papacy, the kingship side of the papacy. And the harlot, what, 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 what did the harlot do? The harlot committed fornication. The harlot com- uh, committed fornication with the kings of the, uh, the world, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Okay? So we have a king, the political powers of the earth, who commits fornication with this, with this who? With this harlot. And then you, you'll see later on that this a woman was drunken with the blood of the saints. Where was it? And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Gee, I wonder why. Sorry, I didn't mean to see. I didn't mean to say J. Uh, G. But I wonder why. I wonder why. What happened here? What does this represent? We have the union of a king and a harlot. We have a union of political and church, church and state union, and church, the the mixing of church and state, and then what? God's people were persecuted because of the, the, the mixture of church and state. And we see a little bit of that happening today. We see, we, we, we saw it fi- uh, five years, five, ten years ago. We see it happening um, prominently, well, not pro- more significantly today because we, ha- we had, not too long ago, we had um, George, uh, not George Bush, I said George Bush, no, Donald Trump in, the, in front of the, uh, a Catholic shrine holding up the Bible. Are they flirting with a union of church and state? Are they flirting with a union? Yes, they are. They are flirting with a union of church and state. If once this happens, when it comes to once it comes to pass, once it is in paper, what happens? What happens to God's people? What do you think? What is it, what does the Bible say? God's people will be persecuted. And it's happening. I mean, it's starting to happen today. It's starting to happen today, but the Bible says also, the Bible says that, so the Bible says that this is Babylon. The word Babylon means confusion. The word, you can't be confused if, you cannot, you cannot be confused if you know the truth. If you don't know the truth, you're confused. What is truth? The law of God, that's Psalms 119 verse 142. The truth is the law of God. You cannot be confused if you know the truth. So there are people who are in Babylon it's not talking about the physical city. It's talking about the spiritual city of Babylon. You, you, if you are confused about the truth of God, you are in Babylon. And you need to come out of her, my people, God says. If you are confused about the truth, you are spiritually in Babylon, in the city of Babylon. You are a citizen of Babylon. And we need to come out of her. We need to come out of her. The Bible says... The Bible says that we need to come out of her. Why is this? Brother Curtis, I got your I got your uh, um, your text a little too late. Um, that's in, in Matthew 14. You can find the story of Herod, Herodias, and Salome. Um, watch this. Um, Revelation 18 and verse 3. Um, well, Revelation... It, well, let's, let's start from verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried, cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. 
Now, this is not a physical falling. I mean, it might be that the physical falling might be a, uh, a result of this. Who knows? But this is a spiritual falling. If you do a proof text on this word falling, fallen, it means sin. If you have fallen, it means you have sinned. Babylon, that great, the great, is fallen, is fallen. It's become a habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Very similar to Ezekiel 16. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. The merchants. The merchants of the earth. These are all the, the, the people who are... The people who are merchants. Who do you think this is? Is Bill Gates one of these? One of the, one of the merchants? Is Bill Gates one of those? I mean, you can you can find all kinds of things. Okay, anyways, the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I I heard another voice from heaven saying, "Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins." Sin. What is sin in the Bible? Transgression of the law. The Ten Commandments. That's why God wants us to come out of her. Now, if you transgress the law, what does that mean? You're confusing truth. If you transgress the law, you're, sin, you're sinning. You're also confusing the truth. The truth would be the Ten Commandments according to Psalms 119 verses 142 and 151. For her sins have reached unto heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, um, fill to her double. So, are there are, are God's is God's people still in a, uh, in in, Bob, in Babylon? It says, "Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people." Now. I want you guys to think deeply here. There's a reason why. There's a reason why Babylon was like is likened to a city. There's a reason why. The, the Babylonian thinking is prominent in the cities. You find you find all kinds of confusion in 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 the cities. If you go to the city of Chicago, you find all kinds of confusion there. You find all kinds of opinions. You you find all kinds of of spiritual opinion opinions there. You got atheists there. You got you you have um, you have Buddhists. You have um, people who are um, spiritists. I don't know if you guys know what that means. Spiritists or spiritualism. That's uh, like um, uh, what what do you call those things? Like um, vo uh, not voodoo. Um, what is that thing, babe? The metaf metaphysics and all these things and um, uh, huh? Oh yeah, new age. New Age theology and things like that. New Age um, uh, uh, spiritualism. You find all kinds of confusion in the city. So confusion is prominent in the city. That's why God wants us to get out of the city. Get out of her, my people, he says. If you walk down the road of Chicago, you find all kinds of things there. Not only that, it's, it's become... It's, Chicago has The city of Chicago has become like a mini version of Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm sorry to say, for those of you guys who, who love Chicago, I love Chicago. I love the city of Chicago. Um, I, well, I used to, because it's because it's beautiful. You see all the buildings and things like that. But that's not where, what God intended intended for us. God doesn't want us in Babylon. God doesn't want us in the city. God wants us in nature where we can be more in tune with Him. Remember, we are to we are to be we are to be the Elijahs of the world. Elijah 3.0, I might add. Elijah, Elijah's of the, the the first Elijah was the original Elijah. The second Elijah was John the Baptist. Okay, what are what are what do they both have in common? They both went into the wilderness. Remember, John the Baptist says, John the Baptist said in, in John one, or was it John two? He says, "I am the voice that cry out of the wilderness." And what does what did John and Elijah also have? They also had another thing in common. They restored true worship. 
they restored true worship. Elijah restored true worship. So did John the Baptist. It says in the Bible that 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 um, John that uh, the the second Elijah was to was to turn the people to their fathers, to the fathers. It says not their fathers, but the fa the fathers. Not talking about um, their own fathers, but talking about the biblical fathers, the Old Testament fathers, Abraham and all the the patriarchs. By the way, I, I'm, I'm working with a, I'm working with a ministry, uh, a media company called Elijah uh, 3.0. We're going to be doing a live stream um, a couple weeks from now um, with them. Uh, yeah, 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 brother, uh, brother Durrell. Yeah, Elijah 3.0. Um, but anyways, we got to get out of the cities, man. We have to get out of Babylon because when, once you're in the cities, there's so many like you could. When you're in the cities, you're surrounded with so many opinions. You're surrounded with so many things that will that will. Um, that will uh, influence you to think like Babylonians. So it's not just it's not just the the Catholic Church. Yes, the Catholic Church is mainly who Babylon is. But you can find that kind of thinking, that Babylonian thinking, in the cities as well, in the in the major cities of of the uh, of the world as well. You can find that kind of Babylonian thinking. So that Babylonian thinking is not just the Catholic Church. That Babylonian thinking is also in the in the cities. Watch this. Watch this. Daniel. Where was it? Daniel three. Daniel three. This is talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay. Wherefore, at that time, uh. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews, talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, this is, now this is, um, um, this is talking about when when Nebuchadnezzar commanded people to fall down and bow down to worship the the golden image that he put up, that he set up. He says that at that what time, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flutes, the harp, sackbut, um, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music. Ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. So, therefore at, the, at that time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all the kinds of music, all the people, uh, the nations, and the uh, languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. But there were a couple Jews, a few, a th there were three Jews named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Where are we? Where are where is the setting here? This is in Babylon. This is in the city of Babylon. Now in the city, do you find all kinds of music? You find all kinds of music in the city. You find all kinds of music. Un un ungodly music in the city. You find all kinds of music that will lead you to worship. That will lead you to, that, that will lead you to worship something else other than God. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Watch this. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? The golden image which I have set up? The golden image that I have set up. That is significant. This is a king talking. He said he has set up a golden image. Is there a golden image being set up today? Yes, there is. The union of church and state. Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast that same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace and who is that and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands 
Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, We are not careful uh, to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So they're saying, even if, even if God does not deliver us from your fiery furnace, we will still not worship you or your image. Okay, watch this. So they were taken into the fiery furnace. They were taken into the fiery furnace. Watch this. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men. So, so this was when they, um, okay, so they bound, okay, then these men were bound in their coats. Okay, they were bound in their coats, okay? And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fiery furnace. But the only people that died were the, the Babylonians. It says, Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The only people that, 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 that was the victim of the fire was the Babylonians. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not burn in the fire. This was in Babylon. The Babylonians were the ones that were that were burned. The Babylonians were the ones that were burned. Not only that, watch this. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery, fiery, uh, fiery furnace. So they were bound. Okay? Now watch this. Jesus Christ shows up, and um, and Nebuchadnezzar, ans I mean, Nebuchadnezzar asks the question, weren't there three men that were bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. Four men loose. So they were no longer bound. In the Bible, to be bound is symbolic for sin. To be imprisoned by sin. But they were loose. They were not, prisoned. They were not prisoners of sin. They were loose. Why? Because they did not have that Babylonian thinking. Spiritually, they were out of that city. Even though they were physically in that city because they, they had no other choice. But spiritually, they were out of that city. In order for us to spiritually have the advantage to be out of the, 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 the um, Babylonian thinking, we need to get out of the city. We need to get out of the city. That's the only way that... It's not the only way, but that we can get a, a better advantage um, of... Um, of not having this Babylonian thinking if we are out of the city. Anyways, we are open for um, for discussion for questions right now. Sorry, guys, I'm uh, I wasn't paying attention to everybody's questions. Um, but let's open up for questions. Let's do let's do a couple minutes, a few minutes of questions, and then we can go. Jonah says, do not worship Bill Gates by taking his vaccine chip that changes the DNA God, God gave you. I don't know about all the, I don't know about all that, you know, like all the vaccine chips and all that. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to take the chip. I'm not going to take a vaccine because I don't trust it. But uh, yeah, I don't know about the DNA changing chip there. I, I'm never going to take the chip anyway. Um, K says, just don't take vaccine. It could kill you. They, uh, These evil peop people want to depopulate the world. 2030 agenda. If you guys have never heard of that, look it up. <clears throat> um, Eric says, will there, will, will there be an actual trumpet or is it is that biblical? There are going to be trumpets. I'm not sure that they're gonna sound like trumpet. I don't know. I don't know exactly how how they're gonna sound like. I think that's just symbolic. But remember, the voice of God is symbolic also. Uh, the voice of God is is likened unto the trump of God. In um, in where was it? First Thessalonians four, and verse sixteen, 
First Thessalonians 4 and verse 16, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. So, that, so he's going to shout. And the voice of the archangel comes out. I wonder why. And the trump of God comes out as well. So the trump of God is the voice of God. When, when Jesus Christ shouts. When Jesus Christ shouts, you will hear from Jesus Christ's mouth the voice of the archangel. From Jesus Christ's mouth, the voice of the archangel. And also the trump of God. So the trump meaning the voice of God. So Jesus Christ will have the voice of God and the voice of the archangel when he shouts. But is it an actual trump? Is it an actual trumpet? I don't know. I think that just means it's going to be really loud. Okay, so again, again, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. The Lord, that's Jesus Christ. He will shout with the voice of God, God's voice, and the voice of the archangel. Jesus Christ is God. That's why he has the voice of God. And then he will also shout with the voice of the archangel. So Jesus Christ is God. That's why he will shout with the trump of God or the voice of God. And then he will also shout with the voice of the archangel. Okay, the voice of the archangel. Okay, so the Lord, this is Jesus Christ. He will have the voice of the archangel and also the voice of God. Because he is God, right? So if he is God, he's, of course, he's going to have the voice of God. And then he also shouts with the voice of the archangel. Okay, anyways. <laughs> anyways, anyways. Um. <laughs> Opinions on Dana Cover Dana Coverstone's Coverstone dreams, not biblical, uh, not biblical. First of all, he says that Russia and China is going to invade the United States of America. Um, but we know, we know that in Bible prophecy in Revelation 13, Revelation 13 states that the two ending powers um, before Jesus Christ comes is the papacy and the United States. So, Yeah, compare it to scripture okay compare it to scripture the an, another thing another thing that he says he said also that that in his dream he um he went downstairs in a basement and in the basement he said that uh he saw satan making a microchip and he said that that microchip is going to be the the mark of the beast so that's not uh that's another that's the biggest red flag of that dream so Jeff Stewart says the commandments of the commandments existed before there ever was a Jew or a tribe of Judah, Judah though, uh, in response to, I don't know. Yeah, I do believe that the commandments have, I mean, it said, the Bible says the commandments, commandments were perfect. Commandments were eternal. Um, it also says, okay, if you, watch this. If you go to Isaiah 14, Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14 Isaiah 14 this is talking about the fall of the fall of um, uh, the fall of Lucifer Satan it says how art thou fallen O Lucifer son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations okay now remember Lucifer was made way before um, earth was made but Lucifer fell before um, bef before earth was made okay so watch this how art, how art thou fallen? If you do a proof text on what fallen is, fallen means to sin. And sin in 1 John 3 and verse 4 is the transgression of the law. So how can Lucifer fall spiritually if there is no law? Right? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? Now this is before earth was created. Watch this. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into the I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Now, what is he saying here? He's saying he wants to be like God. Now, did he did he break the the the, the first commandment of God? He did break the first commandment of God. He said he's trying to say he's he wants to be like God. So he's trying to say there is another God other than God Himself. Okay? He says that he wants to exalt his thrones, his throne above the stars of God. So 
he's turning himself into an idol because he wants to be like God. That's the second commandment. He broke the second commandment. Did he use God's name in vain? Yes, he did because he's supposed to be he's supposed to be the bearer of light. Okay, he's supposed to be the bearer of light. Jesus Christ says, "I am the light of the world." But if he's supposed to be the bearer of light, but he is going against Jesus Christ, which is the light of the wor world, then he is he is um misrepresenting him. He's misrepresenting his name. He broke the third commandment. And if you want to be if you want to be like God, if you want to be like God, now remember the fourth commandment is all about worshiping God as the creator of the world and that's the reason why you um you worship God. That's the reason why you God is worthy to be worshiped because he is the creator who made the world and the universe in uh 6 days. The seventh day is is to acknowledge him as the creator who created the world in six days. So if 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 um if Satan wanted to be like God, then he's saying that he wants to be like the Creator. Therefore, breaking also the fourth commandment, the Sabbath commandment, because you are no longer worshiping God the Father, God the, uh, God as the Creator. You're worshiping who? Yourself. Um, I'm talking talking about Satan. Satan is Satan is worshiping himself then as the Creator. Um, saying that he himself is the creator if you want to be like God, right? Also, who is who is his mother? I mean, not mother. Who is the Who are the parents of Lucifer? God. So then he also broke that commandment. He, he did not honor his, his father. You see what I mean? Did he also, did he also kill? Remember, Jesus Christ said, Jesus Christ said, um, uh, that Satan was a murderer from the beginning. He was also a murderer. Did he commit adultery? Yes, he did. He was supposed to belong to God only. But he separated from God. Divorced God. That's adultery. You see what I mean? Did he covet? Yes, he did. He coveted God's position. He desired God's position. He desired something that was not for him to desire. Did he steal? He was trying to steal the throne of God. He was trying to steal the position of God. Did he? Um, what else? Did, what? What else did we? Did we miss? Did he lie? Yes, of course he lied. He lied. Now remember, um, to, uh, the the commandment says to bear false witness. Uh, uh, another word for witness is testimony. To bear false testimony. To lie. What is? What is a lie? The li a lie is not the truth. And the truth is what? The law of God. Psalms one nineteen. Psalms one nineteen. Verse one forty two. So he was bearing false testimony in in um in Exodus 31 Exodus 32 the law of God was also called the testimony of God that's why the ark of the covenant is also called the ark of the testament the ark of the testimony because it bears the testimony the 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 testimony of God the two tablets of stone so was, was Satan also bearing a false witness he was bearing a false witness so in this in this, in this um, one passage alone, in this one passage alone right here, Satan broke all ten commandments. And this was before um, God wrote the ten commandments on stone here on earth. Do you see what I mean? So, anyways, a couple more and then we can, we can get going. Um, Eric's, er, Erica Sanchez, thank you for the $15 donation. Much appreciated. By the way, if you guys want to support, <laughs> what's up? What's up? <laughs> if you guys want to support this ministry, by the way, you guys can do so by praying for this online video ministry and also donating, um, just like uh, our, our sister Erica did. You guys can donate it, you guys can donate through here or um, through the website, schoolforprofits.tv, or you guys can um, buy some shirts. I mean, uh, at least you guys can can get something in return, or you guys can become a patron, a partner, or a sponsor. Links in the description box um, to our Patreon page. Um, a Miller says these online video studies have been true blessings. It confirms my faith and my understanding. Thanks to all the mediators. 
or moderators working on this project, um, spreading the word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, someone said, "All ten virgins are all ten virgins are believers, but five are foolish and five were wise. Five were not allowed in, so some believers will not be allowed will not be allowed into the supper of the Lamb. They didn't have enough oil. And what is oil? The Holy Spirit." The oil is the, the Holy Spirit. Um, someone said that someone said that the Sabbath was not mentioned in the New Testament. You know, you know was you know what was not you know what people don't uh, regard that is actually not mentioned in the New Testament is uh, using God's name in vain. It's actually not mentioned also in the New Testament, but. It's also, it's, it's wrong to, to use God's name in vain, right? So, just because, you see, you, you see the reason why, the reason why the Sabbath, actually the Sabbath was mentioned in the New Testament. It's actually all over the New Testament. It's actually in Acts 13, where Gentiles were also keeping the Sabbath. This was after, um, way after uh, Jesus Christ resurrected and went to heaven. What's up? What are you looking at? <laughs> okay, one more question. I'm sorry. One more question. I promise. One more question, okay? One more question. Um, one more question, okay. Oil is Holy Spirit. Yes, oil is the Holy Spirit. Now remember... Um, the Bible is the lamp. It says in the Psalms, Thy word is a lamp unto, unto my path. And so the oil, the oil is the Holy Spirit. When you are anointed with oil, um, Final Plague says, Why is the only message on this channel the same thing every week? Why not talk about other subjects? Um, if you're talking about the Sabbath, is because a lot of people, a lot of people ask me about the Sabbath, and, and um, yeah, a lot of people ask on here, on this, on this, uh, 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 what do you call, on the chat room or a chat box or whatever. All they ask about is the Sabbath. I don't know why. They, I mean, I think it's, it's, I guess it's a hot topic. I would like to uh, talk about other things, but um. Yeah, but but people like to, uh, for some reason, like to ask me about the the Sabbath. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Okay, 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 okay. All right. Okay. So again, guys, make sure that you guys participate in the contest. Um, so. Again, we have a contest. Uh, Big Big Brother Curtis. Um, uh, Big Brother Curtis is uh, um, uh, have made a contest on Facebook. Okay, facebook.com slash Attila Kakarot dot se. Link is in the description box, and uh, we're 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 giving away a free T-shirt for those of you guys who uh, enter. Um, we're gonna well, not for those of you guys who enter, but we're gonna pick one winner. <laughs> from those who like and share the, po the the contest post on our Facebook page, link is in the description box. Uh, we were we will uh, pick a winner on August twenty third, and uh, that winner is going to have uh, sent to them a free T shirt of their choice. Um, what else do we have? Uh, Final plague. It seems like Sabbath and the Pope all the time. Yeah, I don't know why. People always ask me about the Sabbath and and the Pope and Sunday worshiping and all that and what 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 should we do on the Sabbath? Um, I'm I'm guessing it's because of the the movie. Um, okay, so yeah, make sure you guys participate uh, participate in that contest if you guys want to win a free T-shirt. Um, follow all of our social media links are in the description box and uh, also uh, Teespring. 
Um, also, teespring.com slash SFP dash active dash uh, gear. Links are also in the description box if you guys want t-shirts and things like that. Uh, and also Patreon page if you guys want to become a patron or a partner or a sponsor. Please go to our Patreon page and you can find out how to do that. Um, all right. Is there anything else? Are we good? Are we good? Uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's important for us to know what the enemy is doing, so that we are not uh, we are not so that it doesn't uh, come to us by surprise. We know um, that the only thing that we're waiting for is the union of church and state, and the Sunday law, right? And that Sunday law is going to come from from what from who? That Sunday law is going to be imposed. Um, by the papacy and so that's why a lot of people want to know more about that because they want to be ready if you don't want to be ready hey you know go you know learn le uh, learn something else or if you want your ears to be tickled or whatever by all means you know that be my guest but if you want to learn if you want to be if you want to be prepared if you want to get out of the cities if you want to uh, if you want to come out of Babylon and Babylon being the papacy and also spiritually Babylon uh, spiritually papacy then we're here to, to, to get you ready for that, okay? But if not, anyways, <laughs> anyways, let's pray. Um, let's, okay, let's, let's, let's pray. Let's, hold on. Jeff Stewart, thank you for that. Yeah, email me if, if anything, or email Brother Curtis. Anyways, let's pray. Our Father in Heaven, we thank you again for this opportunity to um, to study and uh, this opportunity to, to fellowship. Um, we ask you, Father, to continue to bless us, continue to be with us, Father, as we uh, depart and go our own ways, our own separate ways. And Father, please be with those who want to study a little bit more deeper, um, and other subjects as well. But we also know, Father, that everything is pointing towards um, the end. And that's what we are concerned about is uh, getting people ready for uh, for that end, for the end, Father. Um, and so, Father, please be with us now as we um, uh, continue with the rest of our day. And please be with those who want to study more and again, Father, we thank you for this ministry, and we thank you, Father, for inspiring us daily. Um, again, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Um, um, Jeff Stewart says, character is what is important. That is, that is what gets us ready. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, you said, <laughs> wait a minute, is it? Okay, sorry, I got confused there because you said my brie. There's only one, there's only one person that says my brie to me. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, maybe that's a typo, but yeah, characters was simple. Yeah, characters, you know, a lot of people, one more thing, a lot of people, misunderstand the character of Christ. And we do talk about the character of Christ here a lot. Um, some of you guys probably just it just goes out, you know over your heads. But we do have a um, we do have a a, a um, Bible study uh, film that deal with the character of Christ. Um, that's two. Two Bible study films that deal with the character of God, the character of Christ. Two of them that are not as popular as um, the from Babylon to America and from America to Babylon. I don't know why, but that is the that's the most important. Though it, it's called um, Prevail Parts One and Part Two. Prevail Part One and Part Two. If you watch those films, those films are about the character of God and and the whole plan of salvation in full detail. I don't know why that 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 movie is not as popular as from Babylon's America, probably because people want to see prophecy. Are you ready for it to be a guest appearance? <laughs> ready to be a guest appearance? Come on. Come on. Guest appearance. Guest appearance time. Okay. 
it's a uh, it's a little hot in here so he's um what's up say hello over here over here say hello over there look you like to look you like to look over there over there oh he's not looking he's not looking look over there okay he's not looking snap your finger bit or right, clap there it is look Say hello. What's up? What's up? Okay. All right, guys. Thank you guys for coming through. Thank you guys for coming through. And um, we will see you guys Sunday. We will see you guys on Sunday. Say, praise God always. And do this. Praise God always. Boom. Boom. Praise God always. All right, guys. Praise God always. I'll see you guys on the next one. Oops. I forgot to get this. Okay. Praise God always. See you guys on the next one. Whee!